This webinar is about why you need patent protection when you enter the AI market. I'm your presenter, Devor Grazer, the founder and CEO of Kiss Patent. I have 21 years of patent experience as US patent agent. This means I'm admitted to the US patent bar of the US Patent and Trademark Office. But I was also in house for four years. And during the time period, I also learned how to balance the needs of startups to protect their wonderful ideas with also budget and timing and all those other things as well. So I have experience from both sides of the table show today, and I'd be happy to answer your questions about other aspects. This is what happens when you spend way too much time hanging out with lawyers. Nothing in this presentation or any material provided, whether verbally or in writing, constitutes legal or patent advice. So can you patent AI, artificial intelligence? Well, the answer is yes. Artificial intelligence obviously includes a wide variety of technologies. So when you're asking a question like that, what you're really asking is what aspects of AI could be patented or how is AI patented? It's a very deep and also very broad topic in terms of technology. AI is typical, typically embodied in software, which is a patentable category. So it's a type of technology that can be patented. And it fulfills the technical requirements for software patents. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily easy to get an AI patent. And it doesn't mean that you can't get an AI patent simply by running out and trying to do something. You need to also have a strategy. So we're going to cover both of those aspects today. You do want to protect your AI ideas. The rate of AI patent filings is soaring. Microsoft is in the lead with several thousand US patent applications alone. I mean, it's huge what they have. We're followed by Google. Apple is lagging behind. Now, these, of course, are just the US companies. Non US companies are filing many, many AI patents, with Chinese companies in particular in the lead. China is expected to overtake the US in AI patent ownership by the end of 2017. Chinese companies that are filing a lot of AI patents include Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba, and more. So, lots and lots of companies outside the US also filing for patents in addition to all the US companies who are also busily filing for patents. What this means is you don't want to file too late. Patents are a first to file rule. So whoever files first for an idea wins. Now it doesn't matter if I work on my idea for several years and you work on a similar idea for only a few months or weeks or even days. If you file before me, then you win. Working for a, on an idea for a long time is not a protection. It's only who files first. Filing even one day late is too late. If you don't file fast for AI idea, someone else could file before you and block you. So remember, right now there's a rush to file AI patents and you want to make certain that you get your valuable AI patent filed so that you at least have a seat at the table. If you don't file and someone else files before you, that's it. Did you know that over 10,000 patent applications published in 2017 mentioned artificial intelligence or machine learning? All right, so let me mention these things and included many different aspects of artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is not even trying to do a really comprehensive search into all the many different aspects of technologies that go to make up AI. Many of these covered applications of AI rather than new AI methods. So they weren't really working on what I might call the foundation of AI. They're working on applications to use AI in all kinds of areas, everything from detecting leaks in pipes to healthcare, to applications to replace uh, lawyers and accountants, to of course, machine vision and movement applications, such as of course, the famous self-driving car and truck. So these applications of AI are becoming extremely popular. And the 10,000 patent applications I mentioned, those are simply, uh, simply published to date. There are probably many more along the way. Another important point is that publications of patent applications are a trailing indicator. Patent applications take 18 months to file from their first filing date. What this means is that patent applications that were published through the end of October 2017 were filed through the end of April 2016. So there's a huge number of months in 2016 for patent applications that were filed that we haven't seen yet. And we'll have no idea what's going on for them until 18 months after their filing date. So there's a big black hole, but I'm expecting an explosion of published US patent applications in the field of AI for 2018. 
Obviously, you want to file before the explosion. Now, for patents and AI startups, patents can be particularly important for AI startups because the AI market is tough. There are a lot more AI startups chasing investment. Depending on the focus of these, startup, of these startups, they may have higher capital requirements than other startups. So, for example, doing a relatively simple app has a less capital intensive focus than doing a really deep AI startup that is tackling a really hard problem. On the other hand, less than 1% of all U.S. startups have VC funding. So you have more and more AI startups, more startups piling into the area, but you don't have such a big increase in VC funding. So you have a lot of AI startups who are chasing relatively fewer dollars, even if the amount of investment is growing. It's not growing as fast as the number of startups. So how can you stand out from the crowd? So a question I ask my clients is, can you prove your innovation? Right now, there's a crowded market. There's a lot of AI startups, not necessarily enough investment to go around. On the other hand, I've had investors complain to me that there aren't enough investment opportunities in AI. And I said to them, how can this be? There are all these startups. There are more startups coming out every day in this area. How can you as an investor come and tell me that there aren't enough investment opportunities? And what they tell me is, well, there are a lot of startups, but they seem like they're me too. They say they use AI, but they can't really explain what makes themselves unique. They can't really explain what their innovation is or how it applies to their business model. So then I ask my clients and you, all startups, do you have proof of your uniqueness? Can you explain and demonstrate with proof why your AI idea and your AI startup is unique and should get that investment? Well, patents help you prove your uniqueness. Patents show that you've managed to distill your innovation down into a compact document that also functions as a valuable asset for your company. That valuable asset increases your startup's valuation by a million dollars. This figure is widely used by VCs all over the U.S. Patents increase a startup's valuation in the U.S. by a million dollars. Now, they also have been shown to increase sales by 51%. A little hard to tell if this is correlation or causation, um, but one way it could be causation is that big co-companies are very risk averse. If you have a patent and your competitor doesn't, the big co's would rather work with you because if you have a patent, you can defend your ideas, but also you can defend yourself against patent infringement because patents are both defense and offense. Patents have also been shown to increase employment growth by up to 36%. Again, correlation or causation, hard to know, but startup which is able to focus and distill its innovation into a viable powerful asset and is able to use that asset then to get more investment and more sales well, of course they're also going to have higher employment growth they're going to need more workers so there's a clear line of reasoning that shows just how important patents are to startups so why file your patent well i gave you a number of reasons as to why it could be important but to summarize Patents prove that you're innovative. You can prove your invention with a patent, differentiate your, your company from others, and be recognized as the best. Patents are a proof. It's not just you saying how good you are, it's you showing how great and unique your startup is. Prove you're unique, you show you're different from competitors. By having a patent, especially if your competitors haven't gotten one, this shows that you are unique and differentiated. You can also use it to keep big codes from stealing your innovation. Only patents enable you to block your market niche and keep competitors from coming into it. And this can be very important because you don't want to develop your market niche only to find a big company saying, oh, that's a nice market niche. I'd like that one. No, no, no. You not only want to keep people from stealing your idea or copying your idea, but also from entering that market niche that you've worked so hard to develop. Only patents can help you do that. So what do you want to patent? Particularly in the AI area, there's a lot of questions around what to patent, how can you construct a patent, largely because the technology itself is so new that very few AI patents have even made it into court. And usually court is kind of the testing ground for patents where everyone learns what techniques and uh, trips, tips and tricks 
work for a particular technology area and patents and which ones don't? Well, on a most basic level, what you want to patent is the heart of your business. So you have a great AI, AI idea, you have an AI startup. What aspect of that startup could you not live without? What aspect of that startup, if someone were to copy it or steal it, would cause your startup to die? That's the heart of the business, and you absolutely must protect that with the patent. But you also want to protect anything the user experiences. Now, in terms of AI, what the user wants really is the solution. There's a famous saying in US business that users don't buy quarter inch drills, they buy quarter inch holes. So the solution that you provide to your user through artificial intelligence and machine learning is what you definitely want to protect. So in that sense, it's not just about the AI technology, it's about the benefit it brings to the user, the solution that the user perceives. That solution is what's going to keep the user loyal to your company. And that is what you also want to make sure you block your competitors from having. So in this aspect, AI patents are much like other types of patents. It's not just the technology or the implementation, but it's also how your solution impacts the end user. And that solution while powered by AI is not itself AI. It's the solution that you have. So you need to focus on that as well when building your AI patent and not only think about how your particular AI implementation works and what you want to protect with regard to that. By the way, please do feel free to interrupt me with any questions at any point and also let me know if there's like any technical issues. So far, it's been, everyone's been messaging me saying it's been working great. But if you do have any issues, um, please do let me know so we can fix them quickly. So what do you want to protect? Um, in terms of artificial intelligence is as software, there's both the technical implementations. This is exactly what you're doing with the machine learning or how you're doing it. What is your neural network? Uh, are you doing deep learning? Is it directed, not directed? What exactly is that you're using? That's the technical aspect, but there's also the business method aspect. Outside the US, mainly only the technical aspect is patentable. But in the US, you can also protect the application of the technology to a novel commercial problem. This is a much broader form of protection, which you can enjoy in the US. And while your idea may be powered by AI, let's say you're thinking of like a chatbot, for example. So the chatbot may be powered by AI. That's what allows your chatbot to chat with a human. Uh, without you giving it a whole bunch of rules and rules engine exactly what it's going to do, it does it through machine learning. And that's great. But what the business method solution is, it's the chatbot, let's say, for retail help. So that is a business method patent that you can also apply for. You can also include it with your technical patent as well. But it means that you can protect the idea of your chatbot and how it relates to your particular business model and or the particular business space, such as retail, that you may be wanting to use it for. That is much broader than simply the concept of machine learning to uh, have a chatbot learn how to communicate effectively with a human. Other ways to protect software, especially in countries which um, do not allow software per se, but do allow the technical advantages of software, such as, for example, in Europe, you can protect it through systems, which are software hardware combinations, even if the hardware itself may be off the shelf. Also important to think about are B2C versus B2B solutions. B2C, you're talking to the end consumer, you're selling to the end consumer. B2B, you're selling to enterprise, and you may also need to interoperate then with their particular system. So that's the thing to think about when you're uh, constructing your AI patent in terms of what to protect. So you get the most protection possible. Some specific examples, uh, there are tons of health applications of AI, of course, but also automation of thought work. So there's recently been a trend towards automation of services work or professional services work, work done in companies um, such as, for example, lawyers, accountants, um, management type work, any of those things for automation. And of course, the really famous example these days involve vision and movement, particularly for things like self-driving cars and trucks. But these are all applications of AI. Of course, you can also get protection for particular new AI techniques or ways you develop, which are more general. Um, you can also 
have protection for particular applications. So let's say you have a health application of AI, maybe in something known as image processing. Image processing is used to enable computers to do things such as analyze x-rays, for example, and to assist doctors in making diagnoses. So there you have the image processing itself, uh, which you may choose to use an AI for as an underlying support. But then you can also get into things like diagnosis and other applications built on top of that. So when I'm talking about these examples, I'm not just talking about the exact technical implementation. I'm also talking about the real world solution that that technical implement implementation helps you to have. And that is also important to protect because again, remember the end user solution, they, they want those quarter inch holes. So think about the real world benefits that your idea brings and seek to also protect those in your AI patent. Your AI startup lives in an ecosystem and it has to be able to function within that ecosystem. Here are four ways that patents can help your startup live within the ecosystem. First of all, you can make deals with partners. So a patent makes it easier for you to make a deal with a partner because it makes it easier for you to define with your partner what the deal is about, what you are bringing to the table, what value you have. And of course, it also causes your partner to have perhaps a FOMO, fear of missing out moment. They'd rather work with you than someone who doesn't have a patent because even if you only have a patent application, once it issues, and of course, you know, they have no way of knowing whether it's issue or not, but once it does issue, then you could potentially block a partner unless they work with you. Of course, you can also block competitors from entering your market niche. There are a lot of different competitors in the same market niche. Self-driving cars are just one example. Tons and tons of companies in this area with more companies also seeking to partner together to develop their own solutions. Tesla, of course, recently announcing its self-driving truck. You can also use it to defend your company against infringement. So patents are both a defense and offense, and this is particularly important in a fast-growing area like AI machine learning where tons of patents are issuing all the time, tons more patent applications are being published all the time, which presumably will later go on to become patents for at least some of them. So you don't know what other patents folks are gonna be able to get. If you get your own patent, you can at least have a defense. And it can also support your exit strategy for both IPO, initial public offering, and also for exits through acquisition, patents increase your valuation. They make you more valuable to either the public through an IPO or to your acquirer uh, through that type of exit. So when do you want to protect your idea? Well, one important point I always bring up to startups, and this is also true in the AI area, is that you don't need to have actually built your uh, idea fully. Now, in the case of AI, where especially if you're talking about deep learning techniques, you clearly need to have at least run enough of the deep learning so that you have some type of solution, but that doesn't mean you have to have a fully built out product yet. You need to have at the very least a very good design. And it is also helpful in terms of say deep learning to have yes, done some of the work on the data. So you know what type of structures are working, what parameters seem to be working the best. That is the earliest to protect. But in terms of the later end, though, you need to be a bit careful not to wait too long to file. Yes, there's first to file, but there's a few other things as well that could catch you up. One is outside the US, you must file for a patent before you publish your idea. So publishing your idea can be offering a product for sale, selling the product, uh, talking about it on your website, giving a TED talk, putting out a YouTube video, publishing a white paper. Any of these things constitute a publication. If you want to publish your idea, but you also want to get a patent outside the US, you have to file before you publish. On the other hand, the US, you can file for up to one year after publication. So if you do publish your idea, then you have to keep track of that one year deadline because one day after the one year deadline is too late, and you won't be able to get a patent. So timing is really important. You don't want to file too early, but on the other hand, you really don't want to file too late. And in general, earlier is better than later. The US in particular emphasizes either publishing fast or filing fast. If you publish fast, you get a one year grace period, but only you enjoy it, no one else does. And if you file fast, of course, you get the potential for patent protection all over the world. Patent applications do publish 18 months after filing. They do not publish before this. Remember I told you about that black hole. 
Uh, if you don't want your patent application to file, if you file only in the US, you can make a special request so that it won't publish. Where do you want to protect it? Patents are a per country right. So if you want to get patent protection in the US, you have to file in the US. If you want patent protection in China, you have to file in China. A patent in China will not protect your idea in the US and vice versa. Uh, you want to file where you want to do business. So if you want to do business in the US, you file in the US, but also where your competitors are. In the case of AI, there are a ton of competitors in China, as I've mentioned. Chinese companies may end up owning more patents than the US in the areas of AI and machine learning by the end of this year. So just a word to the wise, your competitors are filing for patents and they're filing not just from the US, not only in the US, but also all over the world. Uh, this is an example of four countries in descending order of importance to my clients where my clients like to file. Uh, most important US, all my clients file in the US. Many of them, I'd say the vast majority also file in China. Again, those competitors in China, you wanna be able to block them. The third most important country is Europe. Yes, I know Europe is not a country, but the European Patent Office acts as a single country for the purpose of patent filing, getting a patent. And then the fourth most important one is South Korea. So if you file in these four countries, you will have covered a huge, huge, huge chunk of the world um, and will be able to block your competitors and others from using your really great idea. Patents in multiple countries are beneficial. It's easier to defend your idea. You can also leverage your partners in different countries and also acquirers plus investors. I actually had a client who received a $40 million investment from China because they had filed for multiple patents in China and this uh, Chinese company wanted to work with them. And so they made the investment, was able to partner with them specifically for doing business in China, not all over the world. You can also form partner sharing organizations. You can make deals with uh, others with, who might try to block you with their patents. Patents are useful in many ways and having patents in multiple countries is super helpful. Unfortunately, 21st century patents have to deal with 18th century laws. The patent laws all over the world were basically developed in the late 18th century. So for example, shortly after the American Revolution, uh, the new country of the United States of America issued its first patent laws. Thomas Jefferson was actually one of the first patent examiners. And the laws show that they are 18th century laws. But they're in the 21st century world. One big example of the problem for this is examination and classification is kind of hard to really understand for AI patents. Why is this? Well, first of all, in terms of classification, the classes were developed for mechanical things such as gears. Software is typically spread among different classes. It's a little unclear where a lot of AI patents should go. It also means though that this unclarity or lack of clarity extends to examination. What exactly is an AI idea when it's distilled down and put into a patent, what exactly are you trying to protect? Especially for AI ideas, which are essentially black boxes. Uh, you don't know maybe exactly which parameters are the most important. You can try knocking out nodes. You can try changing the weights. You can try to see which parameters seem to have the most influence. This of course can also be influenced by your data set. So there the question is, well, is the influence more the method? Is it more the data? Uh, what is it exactly you want your output to be? What do you want your outcome to be? And can you trace certain parameters for certain neurons or certain nodes directly to that outcome or maybe by changing the weighting? It is difficult to, to know exactly what to protect. There are a few techniques that help. You can, of course, protect according to the particular AI techniques you've used. I do ever recommend to my clients to try to get a more specific understanding of how their idea in particular is working. Like if you're using a particular technique, why is that technique working for you as opposed to other techniques? If you find that you can maybe isolate some of the parameters that seem to have the most influence, that can be helpful also in protecting your idea. And of course, also the outcome of the idea. Like I said before with, chat, with, before with chatbots, what people want is the solution. How is your solution unique, not just in terms of the AI, but in terms of what it's doing and the benefit it's bringing? So it's important with AI patents to really have a deep discussion with your US patent agent or attorney, like me, 
to understand how your invention is working and what analysis you've done to kind of get into the guts of it and see how well it can work. Simply treating it as a black box will almost certainly cause you problems during the patent examination process. Another issue is enforcement. This has not really been fully understood or sorted out in the courts. How do you know the particular AI technique is being used? I mean, if you have certain ways in which you're using AI for a particular application, healthcare, self-driving car, whatever it is, how do you know someone's copying it? In some cases, you can have claims which are more general with regard to the AI or machine learning and more specific in terms of the other components being used, for example, the LIDAR or the analysis of the LIDAR or how certain uh, external components are interacting, that can be helpful. But if not, then one of the things that has to get sorted out in the courts is how do we have how do we know when we have enough evidence that a competitor is potentially infringing so we can go to court and try to make that competitor give up all the information that would allow us to really get into depth and understand whether the patent's being infringed or not? That question has not been settled in the courts, but it is really important to think about when you're constructing your patent, how would you use it against your competitor? There are already a ton of big co-AI patents out there, so you want to make sure you file quickly. Big companies are filing. Microsoft has nearly 3,000 published applications in this area. Google has over 500, and Alibaba has at least 32 that I was able to find. This is just in the US. So can you still patent your AI ideas? I've had a lot of clients ask me this question. Is it possible to still get a patent with all these other patents that are flooding in? And the answer is yes, but you do need to be first to file your patent. Remember I said even one day later is too late. You won't know who's filed which patent for 18 months. So I do recommend you file as quickly as possible, but then you'll have to continue with the process, not knowing exactly how it's going to sort itself out. Also, don't forget the examiners get all these patent applications. The ones that are filed first have priority, but maybe the later filed ones have details that make them more patentable or stronger patents or just simply different. It's really hard to know how this is going to sort out, and it could take years to sort this out at the patent office. Don't wait to file because someone else could file first and block you, which you really don't want. So how do you file your patent? Well, patents are the broadest protection for your idea. You can protect the core of your idea, defend yourself against copycats, and also block competitors from entering your market niche. Remember, you don't want to develop a market niche and let someone else get into it. What is patentable is basically technology, software, hardware, high tech, etc. The above quote comes from a Supreme Court case in 1973, which decided that bacteria actually are patentable. Anything under the sun made by the hand of man or woman is considered patentable in the US. What is not patentable are things related to content. So for example, music, images, etc. those are protectable by copyright. Code is also protectable by copyright, but only the exact copy of the code, not copying the concept. Uh, names, logos, slogans are protectable by trademark, so Coke, Coca-Cola, Coke, the real thing. Anything you want to keep secret is also not protectable with a patent. And the reason why is that patents represent an exchange. You describe your awesome idea and give details to the public in exchange for which you receive a monopoly right. If you don't describe your idea and you want to keep it secret, then you can't get a patent for it. Uh, this is kind of a summary slide, which I won't go through, but um, if you just give me your email address, I'd be happy to send you the deck. This summarizes some of the things we talked about in terms of what is a patent and why do you need it. But let's not talk briefly about how to get your patent ready. You can get a patent in four simple steps. You do a search to see if you're first, prepare drawings and text, file your application, the examiner checks it. What could be easier? You're expecting to file your AI patent and tomorrow you'll get the patent or at least within a few weeks you think. Well, no, you can file quickly. You can see the first three steps are really, really fast. The problem is it slows down to get to the examiner, especially in new areas like AI machine learning. You will be pending probably for several years. Now being patent pending during this time isn't bad. During the time when you're patent pending and before the examiner starts looking at your application, you can argue that you have the right to very broad claims as broad as, as reasonable, of course, given what you would know about the prior art. Once the examiner starts to look at your claims, of course, then you'll actually know what kind of breadth you're entitled to. But a published patent application before examination is like a startup. It represents potential. 
And it's really not bad if it takes a little bit of time for the examiner to examine it. How do you file fast? The US provisional is the best way to do this. Remember I said file first, file fast, because you need to be first to file. The US provisional has the fewest regulations and rules. You can still change your patent within the year. So you file a provisional application. Within one year, you have to continue the process. You can make changes, you can add material, you can pivot. You can show maybe changes to your business model within the patent. All of these things can be done within that one year. So you have one year of quiet to figure out what you want to do, and then you can put your patent into that final form. At the end of the year, you have the right to continue the process just in the US or internationally. So the provisional gives you the potential to file all over the world within one year with the same date as the date you filed your provisional application um, in terms of what is considered to be the priority date. That is, what is the date the examiner uses when checking your idea to see if it's patentable? So the earlier you file, the quicker you file your provisional application, the earlier your date is, the more likely you are to be first to file. It has fewer requirements and cheaper, but it still gives you full coverage for that one important year so you can decide what's best for you and how you want to proceed. This is an example of a patent drawing. This is actually uh, one of Facebook's patents. Mark Zuckerberg is one of the inventors showing the newsfeed. As you can see, it's boxes and lines and arrows. Really simple AI patents, while they may have more mathematics in terms of the drawings, do not have to be super complicated. You can show complex AI concepts with relatively simple drawings in the context of a patent. If you can whiteboard your idea, you can also do patent drawings. So can you do this yourself? You can, but you have to know the following. Startups can be complicated and so can patents be. You need a strategy. And in particular, you need to know that you're making the right choice. Now with patents, it is possible to make a choice by not making a choice and that I don't recommend. I always recommend that people make informed choices based on taking a look at the options and deciding what's best for their startup. So let's say, for example, you want to get a patent all over the world, but then you publish your idea without filing first. Well, now you can only get a patent in the US. Okay, so you can get a patent in the US. That's good. You have one year to file for your patent after publishing in the US only. That's great. But then you miss that one year deadline even by only one day. Well, that's too late. So now you can't get a patent. Don't accidentally make a choice by not making a decision. Now, just a quick bit about who we are and how we can help you get your AI patent. KISS Patent was founded to help startups realize their dreams. This is super important to us. We're, startups, we're a startup ourselves, but we in particular want to help support you realize your dreams. Startup dreams, of course, are realized through successful ideas. So we get patents for startups to rocket your ideas to success so that you can realize your startup dreams. We help with fixed price packages. We don't work on hourly based fees, but only with fixed price. So you pay only for what you need and you know exactly how much it'll cost before you get started. We have different packages tailored to your needs. So you have full control and we give full support to startups, including in the AI area. We've done a number of patents in this area. We understand the area. We've been analyzing it quite deeply, looking at those Microsoft and Google and other patents to see what competitors are doing. So we can bring to you all of our knowledge and information and give you the best deal. We also have a free patent community. Let me just give you the information if you want to sign up right away. Um, so basically, if you want to sign up right away, all you have to do is go to kisspatent.com. So I'll type that in slash community, just dump that into your browser and join us for free. You get lots of free learning information, a lifetime 10% discount on all the services we offer, members only free support with webinars. All of this is free and it'll help you to make the best decision for your startup. And we also have a great offer just for you right now. The offer ends in 24 hours. You get 20% off our basic patent package if you enter the webinar promo code at the checkout. 
We also are gonna have an AI patent workshop this week. It's only for community members. So if you join the patent community, you can go to the AI patent workshop for free. It includes an in-depth review of industry trends and patents, best practices and case studies, tons of Q&A. This is really focusing on practical tips to allow you to have the best AI patent and to make the best decision for you and your startup. Well, I've whipped through that quickly, uh, tried to answer some questions along the way. Like I said, this is just meant to be a preview. We're gonna be running a longer webinar soon with more opportunities to answer questions. If I didn't answer your question, please, you have my email address, hit me up, and I would love to speak with you. Thanks to you all so much, and I look forward to speaking with you in person. Bye.